This is the story of Thai Airways Flight 261. On the 11th of December 1998, a Thai Airbus A310 was on the way from Dong Mang International Airport to Surat Thani International Airport, also in Thailand. The domestic flight had 14 crew members and 132 people on board. The Airbus took off from Don Mueang and then it started to make its way towards the city of Siratani. Takeoff and crews were normal. The pilots had their eye on the weather, but nothing else stood out to them. The plane was in tip-top shape and the flight proceeded normally. At 6.26 p.m., the first officer established contact with Suratani Airport and at this point, Flight 261 was 70 nautical miles away from the airport. The controller would be giving them a VOR DME approach to runway 22. The weather at runway 22 was not too bad. There were light showers and the wind was calm and visibility was 1500 meters. This landing felt like it would be an easy one. A slam dunk, if you will. As the first officer let the controllers know that the plane was over the intermediate fix, an important waypoint and any approach, the controller let the pilots know that the Pappy lights for runway 22 were not working on the right hand side and they were only working on the left hand side. Now the Pappy lights are these lights that are placed next to the runway and they let the pilots know if the plane is on the correct glide path to land on a certain runway. It's a good feature to have, especially on a rainy cloudy night like this. Soon the plane was at the final approach fix. The final approach fix is this point by which you have to get the plane at the right speed, altitude and heading. If you nail the final approach fix, it makes the rest of your landing so much easier. But the controller still couldn't see the plane, but he cleared flight 261 for landing. He warned the pilots that the runway would be slippery, and then he waited for the jet to break through the clouds and then land on runway 22. At 6.42, the first officer had the runway in sight, and the tower had the aircraft in sight as well. But the approach did not look right, and so the pilots decided to go around. The controller wanted to know when the pilots could see, and the first officer said that they could only see the runway from 3 nautical miles away. The pilots noticed that the plane was to the left of the path that they should have been flying. The weather was starting to get the best of them. Thus flight 261 went around and decided to try again. But unfortunately, attempt number 2 was just a repeat of attempt number 1. The aircraft could not be seen when they hit the final approach fix and the pilots could not see the runway either. When the pilots did break through the clouds, they found that the runway was to their right and not where they expected it. This meant that this approach was a no-go. Things were not looking good for the pilots of flight 261. Thus, they went around again and decided to try again. For those of you keeping count at home, this is attempt number three. For attempt number three, the pilots were trying to figure out why the plane was not lined up with the runway for attempts one and two. They thought that the second approach was messed up because they were following the flight path directly to the VOR. For attempt number three, they were keeping their eye on their fuel. If they couldn't land this time, then they would have to turn back to Bangkok. As they got a weather report from the controller, the pilots sounded worried. The visibility was 1,000 meters and the captain said, 1,000 meters, unable. We don't really know what he meant by that, but if you have any ideas on what he meant, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. On attempt number three, the first officer acknowledged the landing clearance from the controller. No one knew that this would be the last time that they would hear from flight 261. As the gears and the flaps came out, the plane slightly shuddered as it slowed down for the landing. This time, they still couldn't see the runway, which meant that this landing was a no-go and they had to go around. And so a third go-around was triggered. The first officer said, go around, trigger, go levers. As the pilots were calling out procedures in the cockpit for the go-around, the stick shaker activated, meaning that the plane was very close to a stall. Like in the case of Air Canada Flight 646, this go-around was not going to plan. The pilots had very little time to save the plane and they had to act fast. But this plane just kept pitching up. The pitch went up from 18 degrees to 48 degrees. Due to that, the speed just kept bleeding off. Flight 261 crashed into a swampy, marshy area just short of the runway. But despite the fast response of emergency services, 101 people died. The investigation into the crash started off immediately. The investigators immediately noticed that the runway of Suratai International Airport was being extended. This meant that the spacing between the runway edge lights was 120 meters as opposed to the 60 meters that it should have been. This is because one circuit was turned off for maintenance and that meant that half of the lights were turned off. Now, this might seem like a small detail, 
but this small change meant that the runway was very difficult for the pilots to see through the clouds, and that made their landing even more difficult. This crash happened in 1998, and since cell phones were just becoming popular, the investigators wondered if someone using a cell phone on board the aircraft could have messed with the instruments of the airplane. Now, at the time, many countries around the world, like the UK, had strict bans on the usage of cell phones on airplanes. This was because we weren't sure how cell phones affected airplanes, and studies at the time were ongoing to figure out the effects that cell phones had on airplanes. To see if someone was using a phone at the time, the investigators pulled cell tower records from the area of the airplane to see if any of the phones on the plane were transmitting when the plane was making its third approach into Suratai Airport. But no cell phones were on when the plane was landing. This meant that the cell phone theory was dead in the water. This is when the investigators noticed something strange about the airport itself. Suratani Airport has a VOR, which stands for VHF Omni Range. It's basically a beacon that pilots fly towards when navigating. Now, at a lot of airports, the VOR is situated right in the extended center line of the runway. So if you're flying towards the VOR, the right way you're already lined up with the runway. But at Suratani Airport, the VOR was offset a bit to the left of the extended center line. So at Suratani Airport, when you flew towards the VOR, you had to line up a bit once you had the runway in sight. But here's the thing. The pilots flew towards the VOR on a track of 215 degrees. This is because one of the charts that the pilots were using told them to fly towards the VOR on that track. Now the problem is, with that track, if they did that, the plane would intercept the extended center line 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet away from the runway. But visibility was less than half of that, so they wouldn't be able to see the runway and therefore they would not be able to line up with it. Another chart told them to fly towards the VOR on a radial of 204 degrees. Doing this would have let the pilots intercept the extended center line at 1,800 meters or 6,000 feet. Doing that would have let them have a visual on the runway. But since they were flying their 215 radial, they weren't able to see the runway and line up with it. And this led to them being to the left of the runway on all three approaches, making the landing almost impossible. Making matters worse, the pilot that was flying was not really familiar with these sorts of approaches. Okay, this is bad, but it still doesn't explain the crash. Like, okay, you didn't have the runway in sight, but the pilots knew what they were going to do. They were going to go around and head back to Bangkok. How did this passenger plane stall out and end up in a plantation instead of Bangkok? Was there something wrong with the plane? The flight data recorder did not record any faults with the pitch trim system, so that was ruled out. On top of that, the anti-stall systems worked as intended when the pitch of the plane was 17 degrees. The Trumbull horizontal stabilizer trimmed the nose of the plane down, but for some reason that wasn't enough to save the plane. Looking at the data, they saw that the plane started pitching up when the go-around was initiated. One of the cabin crew members said that it felt like the pilots were pulling back on the stick too harshly. Well, this wasn't due to the pilots pulling back on the stick, but due to the way the plane was built. The plane was quite light on its third attempt to land, and the swept back wing design on the Airbus A310 meant that the plane had a tendency to pitch up when power was applied. This was such a problem that Boeing and Airbus both had specialized recovery techniques to get the plane out of such a situation. After this crash, the pilots were trained in the simulator to deal with such upsets. They knew the dangers of commanding full power on a wide body that was kind of light. But we're not done yet. There were more factors at play in this situation. The pilots were kind of worried about timekeeping. They knew that if they diverted back to Bangkok, their schedules would be messed up. On top of that, the pilots were not ready for the upset because the first two go-arounds went off without a hitch. In addition to all of that, the pilots were under a great deal of stress. They had two failed go-arounds and the weather was getting worse. This was a recipe for mistakes to be made, and that is exactly what happened. What do you think is the biggest contributor to this crash? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.